In our applications, we usually want a thin switcher going from light to dark, and also you might want a support system, which means your application will exactly match the theme of your system. Let's see how you can do that inside a Tanstack Start application, and everything is really inside the theme provider. But let's begin from the top of the file, as I'm gonna explain step by step all the moving parts making this work. Let's begin from the themes. Here we've got a couple type definitions. The first one is user theme, that is basically what the user can select, light, dark, or system. And then we have app theme, that is often called resolved theme, that is basically all the themes excluding system. These are the real themes the application can have. Let's jump straight to the utility functions. Here, as you can immediately notice, we're using local storage. And you may ask, Tanstack Start is a server-side render application. So why not using the cookie? And that's a good question I'm going to answer at the end of the video. But for now, let's talk about the local storage approach. This function might be called on the server, so we simply want to just return early and not use local storage on the server because there's no local storage outside of your browser. We can say that system is our default, otherwise we read our local storage and make sure that the theme is actually one of the valid themes. Set store theme, exactly the same logic. If we don't have the window, we don't set the theme. If we do have the window, then local storage and we can do our set item. And next up we have get system theme. That's basically what is set on the setting and it is automatically set by your browser. Now, if we want to change the theme, what we're actually doing is setting a class into our root element. So each time we handle a theme change, we make sure to remove all the classes setting our theme, and then we add a new one. If it's system, we could get system theme to know which one it is. Otherwise, the theme selected by the user. And if it was system, we'll also add a system class. This last step is basically to make sure that if it's system, we have to display the dark theme, but also we want to show system here. While if it's dark, it is the dark theme, but it doesn't show up system. And that's basically what that extra class does. But in the initial demo, you saw that the system theme was changing even if I was changing the theme directly from my OS. And that's pretty much how it worked. I'm setting up a listener to make sure that if the system actually changes its preference, then also our application has to switch from light to dark. And if you're wondering what is this return statement, this is used inside the use effect. So we want to clean up the listener when a component amounts. Now there's this weird syntax, but we're gonna get there in a second. We have our context with our functions and data and our provider. The provider is initialized with the store use theme. This is the function we just saw reading from local storage. And then we have this use effect to set up the listener for the preferred theme. If it's not system, we don't care about the listener. If the theme is system, then we have to subscribe and unsubscribe to the listener. Now app theme, as simple as that. If it's system, it gets the system theme, otherwise the theme is selected. And here each time we set the theme, and that's the function we also expose in our context, we have to make sure that we set our user theme here. So it is available in the React ecosystem. We make sure to set the story theme on local storage, and we handle theme change, that is the function setting up the class to our root element. And if I keep scrolling down, in the return statement of our provider, you see this script once that has a children theme script. That is a string? So how does this thing work? Why is it a string? This is kind of a trick to make sure that an inline script that is usually just a string can be written here as proper JavaScript code. And then by calling to string, we make this run in line. This basically returns an immediately invoked function execution that makes sure that this function is called as soon as possible. And if you notice, it was inside this script once that actually comes from Tanstack router that makes sure that this script is executed only once. And what is this script doing? Well, this is really important. It makes sure that as soon as the page loads, it already has the right theme. And let me show you what happens if I get rid of it. So here I can comment this line. I can go back on the browser. Here we're in the system theme. And if I refresh the page, well, we're on the light theme and this is broken. And same thing happens if I'm on dark, I refresh the page, and again, it 
freaks. And the reason is that this script was the one responsible to set the class here in the DOM. Without the script, this is empty or we can fall back to system. But if I enable it again, and maybe I also save the file, if I refresh the page, you see that now it sets properly the dark theme. And if for system, I refresh the page, the classes are here. But now you may wonder why I'm not just using a use effect instead of using this word trick. You could even say, well, just call a use effect that when a component mounts, it sets the user team. As we know that user team is actually the stored user team. So this has to be the right team, right? Well, yes, it is the right team, but let me show you what happens if I refresh the page. It breaks for a second and then it goes to the right one. Same happens if I'm on dark, I refresh the page now and see the class here is empty and only after a second shows dark. And the reason is that this code is executed when the component mounts. But we want to make sure that our themes is selected before all of our components mount. This has to happen during the server-side rendering phase. So this is the best way to make sure that this happens as soon as possible. And when I refresh the page, I immediately get the right team. Speaking of the team toggle, there's also an extra thing I want to mention. Since we're using the local storage approach, we cannot rely on JavaScript when we show or add stuff based on the team. And the reason is similar to the previous one, and I'm gonna show you in a second. Here you see this logic, well, this might be simplified, but still everything relies on Tailwind in this case, but under the hood is just CSS driving this component. And in fact, here I could make this even shorter. For example, let's say use user team. Let me show you what happens if it's JavaScript driving this component. Here it seems correct, right? Depending on the user team, we drive our team config and everything works fine. But let me go on the browser. And here, if I refresh the page, you see that it is system for a second. And same happens on dark. It shows system and then dark. But the class is fine. There's no flash of unstyle content, but still the button doesn't work right. And the reason is pretty much the same. User team gets the right value just too late. And the only way to have the right value as soon as possible is to simply rely on CSS. In Tailwind version 4, we also have these not selectors, so it's kind of easy to toggle this. Maybe this could be simplified even more, but this works fine. But if you want to go to the next level, let me show you an even better approach using the primitives of Danstack Start. We're back on our team provider, and you might notice that there's a new import here using client only and create as a morphic function. What did I change? Let me use git to show the difference. These are two really nice utilities that you can use specifically for cases similar to this one, where you have a function that might have a different behavior on the server and on the client. So instead of using an if statement, doing some tricky things like checking window, checking if local storage exists, you can simply say, well, on the server, I don't want to execute any kind of logic. Just say the user team is system. And on the client, well, here I can safely use local storage. And if you only want to run something on the client, then you can simply use client only. So running this on the server is gonna throw an error and running it on the client works just fine. Here, I basically use these two utilities for all the cases where functions have to be executed only on the client or might have different behaviors between client and server. And you can find more about that in the test documentation. But if you want to stay even safer, let me get back to main. So I just added a new commit and you can do the same trick to see the difference. This time I added Zod to validate the team. Let me show you again the diff. So here, instead of simply creating a type, I created an enum with Zod, also using catch to make sure that every string that is parsed is actually either one of these or goes back to system. The types are inferred with Zod. The biggest advantage is that we no longer need to manually check if the values that we got are actually valid. We can simply use schema.parse and since we defined catch here, this is 100% guaranteed that it's gonna be a user team. We can do that on get sort team. In all the other places, Zod makes it even easier. But before closing, let's get back on the cookie versus local storage debate. They both work fine, but local storage lets you handle everything on the client, as if the team is something only specific to that user in their client. Well, using the cookie properly requires you to do an API call, but if you're curious, 
I also have here in my git history the initial version using cookies here you see get cookie set cookie inside the server function with the simple local storage approach you're gonna find a bigger difference here on how the team is handled and also in the root as with the cookie you also have to fire this server function before loading the root so that you have the store team variable up in your hierarchy and you can use it wherever you want as i mentioned the code is on github with the entire commit history here you can see the commit where i switch from cookie to local storage and there's also a nice demo so if you want to play with the dark toggle light toggle oh right there's also notifications and well Oh, notification also change when your system changes. And you can see that, you can have fun, and well, that's really it for today. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive on how to manually craft a team toggle on a Tanstar Start application. Subscribe for more Tanstar content, and thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.